Azusa, an old Indian word meaning the blessed miracle. 100 years ago on 312 Miracle Street in the city of angels, heaven came down. For the next 90 minutes, you will experience a recreation of this blessed miracle. Don't sit back, don't be quiet, and please remember, worship is allowed. Welcome to The Fire Still Falls. Shall we stand for the singing of our anthem? who worship with us today and greet them in the name of Christ our Savior. With the turn of the century just behind us, we are well aware of the fast pace of change. The current of change has forced us into the future. Parallels can be drawn into and about our religious system and the modifications in its structure. The cadence of our society, even the world, is that it's time for the turn to take place. The word turn implies revolution, and along with any revolution comes a sweeping flood of new ideas, attitudes, and changes in the modifications of the structure of our societies, religious and social. Yet we may hold the new attitude of contempt towards government, political control, political machinery, and the multitude of other new ideas that are of value to us. Before drawing these parallels, I think it would behoove us and be appropriate to the thought outline and context to categorically arrange these revolutionary and novel ideas that move upon and beset us today. A categorical outline would make much clearer the point we are attempting to bring out. First, it would be beneficial for us to look at our technological advancements. Such was the condition of church at the 
the turn of the 20th century. Wrapped up in the gimmicks and promises of the Industrial Revolution. And White was fairly typical of most ministers in that day. He believed that man's knowledge would bring a virtual utopia. Excuse me. The name is Bartow. Frank Bartow. A Baptist minister when I came to the city of angels, Los Angeles. But something happened to me. My story is the same as many others in this city and in this century. Let me share it with you. I arrived in Los Angeles, California on December 22nd, 1904. My wife and two daughters came to this town expecting a new beginning. We believed that God had brought us to Los Angeles to witness a revival like had never been seen. Little did we know that tragedy would soon strike. For it was only two weeks after our arrival that we stood at the coffin of our oldest child, Esther. Good old Queen Esther, born for such a time as this. She didn't linger long, only three and a half years. The same length of time Christ ministered on this earth. I carried her little coffin in the rain and laid her to rest in the cemetery. Standing there that day with my heart bleeding and tears streaming down my face, I renewed my vow to be used in God's work. After Esther's death, I began preaching twice a day. I soon heard of the great revival occurring in Wales. Ministers, eyewitnesses wrote to me and described the power of those meetings. I began writing tracts and articles of great revivals occurring around the world. But most of all, I began to pray. I prayed as I had never prayed before. I felt as if God had brought me to Los Angeles for a reason. To prepare the migrant workers, the industrialists, and yes, even the ministry for what God was about to do. God, the consuming fire was about to pour fire on this cold, cold earth. I began visiting churches throughout Los Angeles, frantically searching fire, revival fire, looking for some sign of God's outpouring in the city. But it wasn't to be found. The parallels can be taken yet a step further in the religious world. Just as the deeply founded traditions of the Mother Church brought man through the Dark Ages, it is these same traditions that anchor us in this fast-moving new era. We will not be influenced by human emotions existing at this time into abandoning that which has been our salvation. No matter who the prophet, no matter what the message, no matter what disguise, we will uphold the traditions of our Father. Let us all rise as we are led in the benediction by Brother Smith, the editor of our fine newspaper. <clears throat> May the grace of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Reverend, you outdid yourself. Wonderful sermon. I was very blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for my being late to service. I didn't mean to show any disrespect. Oh, none taken, Mr. Bartleman, Frank Bartleman. Well, tell me, Mr. Bartleman, what did you think of the message today? Well, uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend, I, I sense you're an honest man and that you really sincerely desire my opinion. I can say that your message was fairly typical of what I hear preached across the city. It varies a little, but it's still the same. Oh, a connoisseur of preaching? Or... No, sir. I, I, I'm just a humble servant of the Lord that God has brought to Los Angeles. My ministry was never in fine churches like this. No, I'm a preacher to the homeless, to the down and out. I almost feel like John the Baptist. My, my. Does Los Angeles need a John the Baptist? Yes, sir. I believe she does. Los Angeles needs to repent. The deeper her repentance, the greater the coming revival. No offense, sir, but this city doesn't need to cling to traditions as you preached. It needs to repent. I believe that God is about to pour out his spirit in Los Angeles, sir. In fact, 
If you're familiar with the great revival occurring in Europe, you, you would know that. Don't talk to me about those so-called revivals in Europe. All of that repentance and revival is nothing but pure emotionalism. We don't need that poppycock in this enlightened era. We need an orderly, systematic approach to our society's ills. Charles, we've already heard this sermon once today. Surely you're not repeating it again to this gentleman? Please introduce Angela and me to this gentleman. Gentleman? Well, he ridicules my message. And... How do you do, sir? Since my husband will not introduce us, I will. I'm Victoria White, and this is our daughter, Angela. Well, good morning, Miss White and Angela. Uh, now, don't you go putting your foolish notions into her head. She's been through enough as it is, and she doesn't need your emotional poppycock as well. Charles, I mean... Uh, well, uh, I guess I mildly upset your husband, ma'am. I, I was merely saying that in other parts of the world, God has moved mightily when people humbled themselves and prayed. You see, Miss White, there comes a point in time where we must admit that we aren't able, that we don't have all the answers to life's problems. We don't need technology or tradition. We need God. Then God shows himself strong. And if there ever was a city that needs to hear this, Reverend White, I believe it's Los Angeles. Charles, this man makes perfect sense. Why would this upset you? He really does speak the truth. Oh, well, I, I will take that as my sign. I need to be going. Good day, Reverend, ma'am, and Angela. And remember, God can when no one else can. And good day to you, sir. like me. Well, uh, no ma'am, you see I'm poor like you, but I do know where you can get something to eat. Ah, uh, bah, you're just like all the rest of them. Just like all the rest. That, my friends, is a view of the church from the street level. Sir, give us back our ball. That's the only one we have. Ball? This can? Yeah, give it back. Well, sure, son. Listen, it's Sunday, and shouldn't you be in church today? Church? Why would I want to go to church? Uh, well, uh, you would enjoy yourself. You could meet new friends. You would learn of Jesus. Sir, are you wasting your time? Goodbye. I've got to go. Goodbye. And, sir, I don't go to church because they won't let us come to church. They don't want our kind. Yes. Yes, perhaps you're right. The church doesn't want your kind. Hasn't it always been that way? The church doesn't want your kind. You're from the wrong side of the tracks. Rather than drawing circles, the church has learned to draw lines. We draw lines and say, you can come, but not you. We don't want your kind. Lines, lines, lines. We don't want the poor here. We draw lines. 
We don't want people with your color of skin. We draw lines. We don't want you unless your education, your pedigree is up here. Only if your blood is blue enough. Only if your bank account is fat enough. Otherwise, the church don't want your kind. Oh, from the mouth of faith. I remember the pastor of the First Baptist Church in this city. Robert Smell was his name. He had heard of the great revival occurring in Wales, and he was determined to have the same in his church. I joined him with others as we began to pray and seek God for this revival. Soon, though, what began to happen was not welcomed by the church officials, and Pastor Smell was sent packing. Yes, we want revival, but we don't want it guided by the Holy Ghost. We just wanted to fit within our lines. But that was the beauty of the church. When it began on the day of Pentecost, there was no racial lines, no color lines, no educational or social barriers. In fact, that's why 120 people gathered together in an upper room in Jerusalem. Because the church across town did want their kind. Followers of Jesus. People who believed that Jesus died at Calvary, was buried in a borrowed tomb, but rose again, and that you and I could follow him through repentance of our sins. Water baptism, calling upon his name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's when it happened, Pentecost. The fire fell, the fire fell and they became one. Rich, poor, Jew, Gentile, one. Take a look at this city. A quarter of a million thirsty souls. And all of them are searching for something to fill the longing within. Look hard at this city. 30,000 new, confused, sin-sick people that are moving in every single year. We don't need more lines drawn. We don't need more technology. We don't need more religious tradition. What we need is a Pentecost. Oh God, send us a Pentecost in Los Angeles. Send down the same spirit that fell when the church began. Send us. Send me a Holy Ghost revival. For the land is laying barren. Desolation everywhere. The harvest we long for we look, but it's not there, and the devil sows his evil seed to thwart the master's plan, so tired and discouraged, the servants work as best they can, we need a Holy Ghost revival, revive us, O oh Lord. Send the rain from heaven, flood our thirsty souls. We need a Holy Ghost revival, revive us, O oh Lord. And open up the heavens, take control. Uh, oh Lord, for the sky seems brass above us as we look for promised rain. We sow the seed of precious truth to reap. The golden grain, but the spirit power is what we need to see the harvest come. So, oh Lord, send the Holy Spirit. 
Come and fill us with your love. We need a Holy Ghost revival. Revive us, O oh Lord. Send the rain from heaven to guide our our thirsty soul. We need a Holy Ghost revival. Revive us, O oh Lord, and open up the heavens. just like God I prayed that prayer not even realizing that God had already answered it around the turn of the 20th century in Topeka Kansas a Bible school began meeting in a building called Stones Folly their instructor Charles Parham gave the class instructions to search in the Bible in the book of Acts and find the evidence of having received the gift of the Holy Ghost the class determined that the initial sign of having received the baptism of God's Spirit was speaking in other tongues as that very same Spirit gave them the ability. Of course, they received this experience gladly. Parham began another Bible school in Houston, Texas. Parham, like most whites of his day, was a strict segregationist. Yes, another line. But there was one young black man who wanted to come to his Bible college so bad that Parham allowed him to sit outside the class door and listen through a cracked door. That young man, William J. Seymour. A call soon came for William Seymour to take the Pentecostal message to the West Coast. He only got to preach one message. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Anyone who received the gift of the Holy Ghost would speak in other tongues just like the apostles did when the church began on the day of Pentecost. What was so astounding about this message was that Seymour preached an experience he himself had not received. But he saw it in scripture and he believed it. Most received his message enthusiastically. But Sister Hutchinson, overseer of the Santa Fe mission, was determined that his message was false doctrine. So she did what people have been doing for years. She locked the door. There, won't have to worry about that one-eyed devil no more. Sister Hutchinson, why did you padlock the mission door? Devil doctrine, that's why. And there's plenty of other places in Los Angeles where that man can preach that devil doctrine too. But he ain't gonna preach it here. No, ma'am. Why, Sister Hutchinson, whoever are you talking about? William J. Seymour, that's who. You mean the brother who was coming to be our pastor? He ain't no brother of mine. And he sure ain't no pastor of mine. But sister. Now don't you Sister Hutchinson me. You're in that silly garden of yours 12 hours a day. You didn't see what went on around here this morning. Why it was disgraceful. 
Why, Sister Hutchinson, you don't mean. Oh, yes, I do mean. Why, there were things going on around here that weren't even Christian. Well. And that's not all. Now, I really shouldn't be telling you this, but out of the goodness of my heart, I allowed that one-eyed devil to come here, and he had the goal to get in the pulpit and start preaching that, that, oh, Oletha, you just wouldn't believe the things he said. Why, Sister Hutchinson, whatever did he preach? Oh, I should have known better than to take that woman's advice and send for that man. Can any good thing come out of Texas? Sister Hutchinson, what did he preach about? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost? Yes, yes, the Holy Ghost. Well, well, what did he say about the Holy Ghost? He said that when someone receives the Holy Ghost, receives they... Receives the Holy Ghost. Letha. Are you going to keep asking me silly questions or are you going to listen to what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry, Sister Hutchison. Go on. Very well. He said that when someone receives the Holy Ghost, they speak in other tongues. But they do what? Girl, when was the last time you had your ears checked? He said when you get the Holy Ghost, you talk in tongues. In tongues? Well, what's that? Tongues means other languages. Well, why would he say that? How should I know why? Something about it happening four times in the early church. But who cares what happened way back then? I couldn't understand what he was talking about in English, let alone other languages. But Letha, if that wasn't enough, he got behind the pulpit and started jumping. <gasps> jumping up and down in the church? In the church. And then he started shouting hallelujah. I felt uncomfortable during the whole service. Oh, Sister Hutchinson, if I were you, I would worry about him. In fact, you probably never hear from that fellow again. I know I won't. I padlocked the mission door. He won't be stepping foot back in this place again. But if there's a God in heaven, this whole tongue-talking business will blow over. You mark my words, Letha Brown. Anyone who believes in that message will never amount to anything. and locks. What people try to do to keep God from moving. Seymour showed up to church that night to find a padlock. A kind gentleman offered him a place to stay for the evening. Then a Baptist man, Richard Asbury, invited him to conduct prayer meetings at their home on 214 North Bonnie Bray Street. The Bonnie Bray community was predominantly black and had a rich religious mixture of Methodist, Baptist, and holiness folk. The services were largely Bible studies and prayer meetings. On March 26th, Having heard that God was moving, I attended one of these prayer meetings, and that's when I met William Seymour for the very first time. No one would have expected much from this young man, born to newly emancipated slave parents in the Deep South. Those Reconstructionist years were so hard, the Ku Klux Klan, Jim Crow laws, and carpetbaggers made this time even tougher for former slave families. Little William contracted smallpox and left him blind in one eye. But like the prophet Isaiah, he had a great vision of his God. How could William Seymour have known? God would make him one of the most powerful religious figures in all of America's history. Isn't that just like our God? During the 10 day stretch of prayer and fasting at Bonnie Bray, the fire fell. People were moved on by the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues. The crowds began to come, but there simply was no more room. It was then that Pentecost moved to its most famous location in Los Angeles, 312 Azusa Street. The preacher wasn't much to look at. The platform wasn't much to look at. The pulpit was just two stacked orange crates. The building really wasn't much to look at either, just an abandoned barn. It had been once used as a Methodist church, but that was long, long ago. Its most recent occupant had been a tombstone maker 
In fact, debris was still strewn throughout the building. In the second floor loft, prayer meetings were held. Prayer would be heard here day and night for the space of three years. On its simple, slatted pews with its dirt floors, the services were held. And yes, at Azusa Street, the fire of God fell. Up in the graveyard remnants, the church was reborn. Pentecost had come. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I remember.
of Azusa Street, the Holy Ghost has come. To those hurting, to those in misery, to those in addiction, the Holy Ghost had come to comfort and change. Little did we realize at that time how soon we were to need this comforting presence of the Holy Ghost. From the beginning, ridicule was heaped upon this revival. The Los Angeles Times took special delight in ridiculing it. Cartoons appeared regularly mocking the moving of the Spirit. On April 18, 1906, the very first article appeared, not too many days after the Azusa Street Revival had begun. Breathing strange utterances and mouthing a creed which it would seem no sane mortal could understand, the newest religious sect has started in Los Angeles. Meetings are held in a tumble-down shack on Azusa Street near San Pedro Street, and the devotees of this weird doctrine practice the most fanatical rites, preach the wildest theories, and work themselves into a state of mad excitement in their peculiar zeal. Colored people and a sprinkling of whites compose the congregation, and the night is made hideous in the neighborhood by the howlings of the worshipers who spend hours swaying back and forth in a nerve-wracking attitude of prayer and superstition. They claim to have the gift of tongues. Colored people and a sprinkling of whites. I was one of the whites in the tiny congregation. That's what William Seymour called the greatest miracle of all, that blacks and whites could worship their God and creator together. You see at Azusa Street, the blood of Jesus Christ had completely washed away and obliterated the color line. Yet this article was not the biggest news of that day. For on the very same day that this article appeared, something much more memorable took place. shook as never before. One eyewitness said, the earth seemed to sink for a moment, and then the buildings rose in the air like a balloon. Then, there was another sinking, the like of which no mortal ever experienced a second time. Then, the buildings of the town rocked and wobbled like a frail thing in the storm. The earthquake was felt as far north as southern Oregon, west into central Nevada, and as far south as Los Angeles. The ground broke open for more than 270 miles along the San Andreas Fault, the greatest displacement being 21 feet. The shocks felled power lines and burst open gas mains. Adding insult to injury, the fires followed. With severed water mains throughout the city, there was simply no easy way to put out the fires. So the fires burned wildly for days. By 10 p.m. the night of the earthquake, the horrific proportions of this tragedy was known. An estimated 3,000 dead, 50,000 people homeless, damage at $400 million. One writer said, it was a calamity that makes the recent eruption of Vesuvius appear trivial. Done 
Los Angeles on April 19. As aftershocks continue to rip through the city, crowds filled the streets, vacating buildings, thinking that the earthquake was building strength and would soon strike again. Anguished citizens converged on the newspaper offices, asking about relatives in San Francisco. Folks, please, please, folks, get back, get back, please, silence, please, I have the list, it's a partial list of the earthquake's victims, I'm afraid it's quite long. I will read their names one at a time. May God have mercy on us all. Comfort to these people. Oh, please. Brother Smith, I, I don't know. Reverend White, please, we need you. Please, some words of comfort to your Reverend. Please. Please. Folks. Friends, I don't, uh, I mean, I, I have no words of comfort that I can speak. Your needs are too great. Your hurt is too immense. We need help. We need God's help. Father, we need your comfort. Send us the comforter you promised. Send us, send me. Send us the Holy Ghost.
Excuse me, sir. Might I ask you a question? Uh, excuse me. What did you say? Um, I'm sorry to disturb you, but I wonder if I might ask you a question. Y yes. Yes, you may. What is your question? Did you mean what you said a moment ago? The part about needing the comforter? The part about needing the Holy Ghost? Yes, I suppose I did. Uh, I mean, we can't make it on our own now, can we? No. As I've always said, uh, there comes a point in time when we aren't able. Uh, we don't have the answers to life's problems. Uh, we don't need technology or tradition. We need God. God. Then God shows himself strong. And if there ever was a city that needs to hear this, it's Los Angeles. Yes. Where have I heard that before? Well said, well said indeed, and I agree wholeheartedly. Tell me, sir, have you received the comforter, the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, uh, I pastor a large church in the city, and uh, I'm a well-respected minister in this community. I see, I see. Sir, I'm not on your plane intellectually. I'm just a son of slaves, but might I invite you to our church? Well, I'm a very busy man. What church is that? It's on Azusa Street. Last week we opened it and your prayer has been answered. The comforter has come. Oh, but I, I, I read about you folks in yesterday's newspaper. Why? Why? Why not? Because I don't believe that stuff. That's why not. Bunch of emotional fanatics. I, I, hey, where are you going? Who are you? I'm just a humble servant of the Lord, sir. I'd hope to see you at Azusa. Well, I seriously doubt it. Sir, there are some people who are so entrenched in their religious ideas that they wouldn't seek to find something that is real. Real like the fire of the Holy Ghost. Azusa, fire, holy ghost, comforter, poppycock, mark my words, I'll never be caught dead at Azusa Street. Mm-hmm, we'll see, Reverend White, we'll see.
Welcome to Azusa Street. Services like this would continue day and night for the space of three years. Visitors from over 50 countries came to see these meetings. Pastors of the affluent churches across America came to see and hear for themselves. And yes, even Charles White. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, church, Brother Victor has something to testify about us. God is so good. Yeah. Amen. I got something I want to tell you, brothers and sisters. Seven years ago, I fell off a wagon and I hurt my back. Uh -huh. Ever since then, I've been on these here crutches. Yes. The other day, I got to hurting so bad, I couldn't even get out of bed. So I called Dr. George here. When I asked him to hurry over, he wanted to know if I wanted him to bring his little black bag or his little black Bible. I told him to bring me something that would bring relief. He brought his Bible. When I saw he hadn't brought any medicine, I got as mad as a horn and I asked him why. He said, lay down and get quiet because he brought the best medicine of all. He started to pray. It didn't take long for something to start to happen. That's right. I felt something hot burning in the center of my head. Oh, yes. it, it moved all the way down my body, clear to my toes. Yes. And when it got to my toes, it stopped. Yes. And then it started all over again, went all the way back to my head. Yes. I just lay there for a minute waiting for something else to happen. Mm. But I discovered the pain was gone. Yes. I felt good. Yes. I felt so good, I jumped right out of bed and started dancing yes. around the room. Yes. Jesus healed me. Praise the Lord, he healed me. Yes. I don't need these devil sticks no more. Yes. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I've been healed. I can walk. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, saints, let's praise God. As Brother Victor hang those crutches on the wall. Oh, Jesus, 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 we love you, Jesus. Jesus, we just want to thank you for being so good to us. We want to thank you for touching us, Lord. Speak to us now, Lord. Give us what we need to hear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, saints, they've tried to tell Seymour that God doesn't heal anymore, but he just did. Hallelujah. There are some who say, Seymour, God, amen, spirit isn't being poured out anymore. Well, it just did. Amen. He said in his word that your sons and your daughters would prophesy. He said in his word that they would speak with new tongues and that the spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is fulfilling his word here tonight. Now there are some who send Seymour. God ain't gonna come to no barn like Azusa, but market saints, he just did. What happened on the day of Pentecost is happening here at Azusa, and it will not stop. God is raising up a generation of people that will follow after his spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, God. Well. It wasn't in a robe of purple that the Spirit of God chose to dwell. And it wasn't in a sacred temple that the Spirit of God really fell. But in a quiet upper room in Jerusalem. Like a mighty wind As a hundred and twenty Started speaking in tongues On the day of Pentecost Holy with children of the upper room We got the fire like we did that day Children of the upper room Baptized with the fire to Holy with children of the upper room Lord started pouring his spirit out on the 
so soon, Reverend. Reverend what? Reverend Charles White. And yes, I'm leaving. Why are you leaving? To be perfectly frank, I've had all this emotional chicanery, I can tell you. Is that what you think this is? Chicanery? What else could it be? It could be the Lord. You, sir, I presume are an educated man. It amazes me that you participate with such a conglomeration of uh, societal rejects. I doubt there's more than five here who've even attempted an education. Was it not true that when Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago, the majority of his followers and companions were the misfits of society? What? What? Was he in fact not rejected by nearly all the, the wealthy and the educated? Well, I suppose that is true. But that statement about a miraculous healing was an obvious lie. Miracles ceased when the apostles died. Reverend, I'm no Bible scholar, but if you'll read the 8th verse of the 13th chapter of Hebrews, I believe you'll find that it says Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if the Word of God is true, then why would Jesus heal yesterday and cease to do it today? It's getting late, and I've got to go. Reverend White, please take my card. You might have need of my services someday. We have a physician, sir. Well then, if you don't need my little black bag, you might need my little black Bible. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Reverend White, and God bless you. I hope to be seeing you again real soon.
in all the days of my life. Never have I seen such a horror, terror, disgusting, ridiculous, unbelievable display of brazen emotionalism. Of all the inventions man has made, this has got to be the most precise, exclusive, unprecedented, perfectly hilarious example of pure insanity. They really think they're worshipping God as loudly as a drunken ship's crew, unruly like a riotous mob. It's really not the proper thing to do. In all the days of my life, never have I seen such a loud, noisy, ear-splitting, earth-shaking, heart-stopping array of bold idiocy. Since the time that Eve ate the apple, this is without a doubt the most positive, absolute, definite, doc documented example of sin. These people really are in a state. What they did just can't be true. Would you believe they didn't even pass an offering plate? It's really not the proper thing to do. But wait. Now wait. Let's think this whole thing through. What if, uh, just suppose, that all that noise were true, then I'd have to go tell the people to go to church on my side of town, and they'd listen quite attentively, with arms folded, heads cocked, and a frown. And then, of course, their immediate response would be to be stupefied, horrified, terrified, petrified, undignified, with anger at poor me. Then all their proper upbringing would fall aside and they begin shouting, get him, tar him, feather him, run him clear out of town. Now, where would I begin? Even if I talked until my face turned blue, it would only cause them to sin double times double. It's really not the proper thing to do. Now, I've waited. Yes, I've waited. And I've thought the whole thing through. And I find, in my mind, these noises can't be true. And the reason it's treason, and it's really not the proper thing to do. Why, dear? What's the matter? It's Angela. What happened? She fell from her chair today, and she's been unconscious ever since. Well, what does the doctor say? That's just it. Dr. Fitzgerald is out of town, and what are we going to do? Now, now. Be calm, Victoria. Everything's going to be all right. I was only out of the room for just a minute. Don't blame yourself, and don't fret. Where is Maddie? She's with Angela now. Well, let's go in. Any change, Matty? No, sir. She's just lying there.
here. Call this doctor and tell him to please hurry over. Yes, sir. Why, this is Dr. George. Do you know him? Oh, yes, sir. He's a wonderful God-fearing man. Goes to the same church that I do. Don't tell me. Y you go to that barn of a church on Azusa Street. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord is there. How did you know about it, sir? Never mind that now. Just go and call him and tell him to hurry. Yes, sir. Seven years on crutches. What did you say, dear? It wasn't important. You said something about crutches. Said it wasn't important. Charles, where did you meet this doctor? I met him in church today. Today? Well, today is only Thursday. Where on earth is there a church open in the middle of the week? It was Mattie's church on Azusa Street. Mattie's church? Azusa? Well, that's clear on the other side of town. Whatever were you doing there? Well, I'd heard stories about it, uh, and I went to see for myself. Stories? What kind of stories? Stories of miracles. What kind of miracles? Well, miracles of healing, uh, like in the Bible, you know, how Jesus healed the blind and opened the ears of the deaf and made the lame to walk. Well, well did you see a miracle? It was a miracle, all right. A miracle. Someone hasn't locked them all up. They were loud and so emotional. And someone stood up and said he'd been on crutches for seven years and that the Lord had touched him and healed him instantly. Victoria, it had to be demonic. And, and those poor people really think they're worshiping God. Uh, oh, Angela. Angela. Be real still, baby. The, the doctor will be here in just a minute. How do you feel? Oh, well, my head hurts a little, but <clears throat> I'm okay. Well, what happened, honey? Promise you won't be mad? Sure, honey. I tried to stand up. Angela, honey, why do you do these things? You know what the doctors have said. I know, but I'm tired of that old wheelchair. I know you are, but the doctor said if you're not careful, this could get worse, and then you'd have to stay in bed all the time. But, Daddy, I believe that Jesus is going to heal me. Whatever gave you that idea, Angela? Maddie? Maddie said that if I would trust in Jesus, Jesus could heal me. Well, she shouldn't have told you that. She reads to me out of the Bible, too. She read me the story about a lame man who Jesus told to get up. And Daddy, the man got up and walked. Angela, that happened a long time ago. Well, things like that just don't happen anymore. Maddie says they do. Maddie's told me lots of stories about people at her church who have been healed. It happens all the time there. Daddy, why doesn't it happen at our church? Shh. I want you to stop thinking about that now and rest. Yes, sir. Well, if this patient is unconscious, I think I need to see an optometrist. Uh, good evening, doctor. Good evening, Reverend. When I gave you my card, I certainly didn't expect I'd be hearing from you so soon. Yes, our regular physician's out of town. Maddie told me all about it. Uh, I'd like to examine this unconscious patient. Please. Maddie. Yes, sir? I'd like a word with you. Well, well now, sir, just let me explain. How dare you fill that child's head with thoughts of ever walking again? Sir, Dr. George said you went to my church today. What's that have to do with Angela? He said you saw Brother Victor hang his crutches on the wall. 
crutches he'd been using for seven years. What I saw at your church was nothing but pure emotionalism. Now I hear from our daughter that you've been filling her head with that, that poppycock. My Jesus ain't no poppycock. When once I heard of a people who claimed that old time religion was real, I said, I've got to go out and take a look at that crowd, for it's just weak minded I feel. So I went up them stairs and I peeked around the door and the devil said, girl, don't you go in there. I said, oh, it's all right. I'm just going to step inside and I'll sit as far back as I can. Well, they sang with emotion, and they all clapped their hands. I said, when they start to pray, I'm getting up and get out of here. But then the preacher started to preach. He was looking straight at me, told everybody how mean I was. I don't think he liked me at all. But then someone stood up and started to shout about how they'd been saved and all. Well, I must admit. Something got a hold of me that night. And now I know this thing is real. Why, I won't forget it as long as I live. For I found salvation was right. Well, something. Of emotionalism was poppycock. Maddie, I don't want any more of it in my house. Reverend White, Angela believes that Jesus is going to heal her. And from what I hear the doctors say, it's the only hope that that child's got. Would you take away the only dream she's got? Could you be that cruel? Of course not. I don't want to take away her dreams but I'm certainly not so cruel as to let her believe and hope in something that will never come true. She is paralyzed. She cannot walk, and she will never walk again. If you must try and help her, then help her to face that fact. In my Bible, Jesus told me to tell him the desires of my heart, and if I believe in him, he'll give them to me. Now, the help that I have tried to give to Angela was a belief in God so that he would give her the desire of her heart. And as far as that goes, it wouldn't hurt nothing if you would begin to believe a little bit yourself. You dare quote scripture to me. I am the rector of one of the largest churches in this city, and I spent years in cemetery. I mean seminary. You said it right. Learning the Bible, and I certainly believe what I've been taught but I refuse to believe in something that facts say won't happen, and the fact is, she will never walk. But aren't you overlooking a greater fact than that, What's sir? What's that? Oh, the fact that my God can do anything. Well, with the exception of just a slight bump on her head, she should be able to return to her normal routine at the morning. Thank you, Doctor. She'd like to see you, Reverend. Doctor, I understand that my husband met you today at church. 
Yes, on Azusa Street. Maddie and I both go there. Oh, that's right. Praise the Lord. I just, I can't imagine what inspired my husband to venture clear across town to go to a church in the middle of the week. Well, perhaps he was looking for the Lord and heard that he was there. Doctor, my husband is an ordained minister of one of the largest churches in this city, and we do attend church every Sunday on this side of town. Yes, ma'am, but just because one attends church doesn't mean that one knows everything there is to know about the Lord. And whatever do you mean? Well, knowing about the Lord and actually knowing the Lord are, are two different things. You see, many, many people know the theology of Christ, but there's more to it than that. See, when Jesus died for our sins, he ascended into heaven and sent to, uh, the Holy Spirit to us as a comforter. Mm -hmm. Now, to have a personal relationship with Jesus, you've got to accept this and be filled with the Spirit. Isn't this done when you are baptized? Not always. You see, John said that he baptized with water, but that Jesus would baptize with Holy Ghost and with fire. This, this is an infilling of His Spirit that brings the comfort and the power of His presence. So there's more to living for God than just frequenting His house on Sundays. Ooh, Lordy, yes. Well, there's peace, hope, joy, power, and there's speaking in tongues, what, and there's... What did you say? Speaking in tongues? Whatever is speaking in tongues? Listen, why don't you and Angela come out one service and just see for yourself? I don't know. I'd have to think about that, Doctor. Well, do this. Pray about it. If the Lord wants you there, He'll place that desire in your heart. We'll see. Well, I've got some more calls to be making, so I'll be going. Thank you for coming, Doctor. It's been my pleasure. I hope to see you again real soon. Good night, and thanks again. I'll see you out, Doctor. I wonder if it would be the proper thing to do. Lord, it seems like we've tried everything. After all the doctors, the money, still nothing works. What else is there left to do? Who else is there left to turn to? All these questions and still no answers. Speaking in tongues? Who ever heard of such a thing? Could there possibly be more to living for God than what we already do? Lord, I know your word tells us to be faithful to your house. Is there more God to it than that? It hurts so bad to see Angela lying there desiring to walk. I know you healed in Bible days. So God, if you still do miracles, touch my little girl. You're sure home early today? Yes, I brought a little gift for Angela. Oh, that's nice. She'll like that. Oh, well, where is she? Who? <laughs> who? Angela, that's who? Where is she? She and the missus is out. 
Oh, really? Out where? Well, let me think. Uh, let's see. They went for a ride. Well, do you know where they rode to? Mm-hmm. Sure do. Well, where did they ride to? Let me think. Let's see, they, uh, they left about an hour ago in the car. They had to go way over there, back down around the old part of town. And then they crossed over. Oh, Reverend White, they done gone to church. To church? What church? It's just a little old mission church. And where is this little old mission church? It's in an old run-down part of town about 10 to 15 miles from here. Not many folk in this part even know where it's at. They void the area if they can. It's on Azusa Street. Azusa! Reverend what? where are you going? I've got to get over there and save them from that mass hysteria. Save them? Mass hysteria? Save them. Lord, if that man don't watch out, he's liable to go over there and just get plain old saved himself. Preposterous. That's what it is. God doesn't heal people anymore. And, and now my wife has taken our poor daughter to Azusa. Just think how disappointed she will be. Daddy, I believe Jesus is going to heal me. Reverend White, Angela believes Jesus is going to heal her. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I've been healed. I can walk. We will not be influenced by human emotions existing at this time into abandoning that which has been our salvation. Would you take away the only dream she's got? All that repentance and revival are nothing but pure emotionalism. Did you mean what you said a moment ago? The part about needing a comforter? The part about needing the Holy Ghost. Now, if the Word of God is true, why would Jesus heal yesterday and cease to do it today? We will uphold the traditions of our fathers. Maddie said that if I would trust in Jesus, Jesus could heal me. In my Bible, Jesus told me to tell him the desires of my heart. And if I believe in him, he'll give them to me. The help I've tried to give to Angela was a belief in God so that he would give her the desires of her heart. There are some, sir, who are so entrenched in their religious ideas that they wouldn't seek to find something real, real like the fire of the Holy Ghost. God has moved mightily when people humble themselves and pray. There comes a point in time when we must admit that we aren't able, that we don't have the answers to life's problems. We don't need technology or tradition. We need God then God shows himself strong. There comes a point in time when we must admit that we are David. We need God. Then God shows himself strong. Reverend White, Angela believes Jesus is going to heal her. Daddy, I believe Jesus is going to heal me. God, I don't know if it's the proper thing to do. If you still work miracles like you did in the Bible, would you, could you? Oh God, I, I don't care if it's the proper thing or not. Work a miracle. 
God, work a miracle. We need a Holy Ghost revival. Revive us, O oh Lord. Send the rain, send the rain from heaven. Flood our, our thirsty souls. We need a Holy Ghost revival. Revive us, O oh Lord, and open up. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord here today. Hallelujah. Come on, saints, let's praise him here right now. Hallelujah. 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 You know, saints, it's an exciting time to be alive. God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. The church of Jesus Christ is in the midst of a worldwide revival. I said it's in the midst of a worldwide revival. You know, saints, right before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples that he would send them back another comforter. A comforter that would never leave them. A comforter that would always abide with them forever. That comforter has come. I said, that comforter has come. Now, some folks have asked the question, why? Why send the comforter? Well, the Comforter has come to remind us of everything that Jesus has taught us. Now, the Holy Ghost has come to teach us all truth. Now, the Holy Ghost has come to give us power. Now, power to be set free. Now, power to be healed. Now, power to be delivered. Now, there's no need for sorrow. Now, there's no need for pain. Now, the Comforter has come. All power that's in heaven and earth is here today. Now, that rain that was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that spiritual rain is falling here today. The comforter has come. Well, in the upper chamber, saints began to pray, waiting for the spirit to come passing their way. And suddenly there came a sound of rushing mighty wind. Tongues of fire came down, set on every one of them. Oh, they were dancing in the spirit. They were shouting for joy, preaching, prophesying, lifting up their voice. They were all in such amazement as the spirit came down. Revival started breaking out all over the crowd. I'm talking ladder rain that is being poured out now. Joel prophesied what his power would do for you, your children. Your children too, it'll break the chains of bondage, set you free, make you walk in joy, give you victory. You'll never be the same once you pour out that ladder ring. Come on, sing it in the choir. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. The church is still alive. Shout it from the mountaintops. Let the saints proclaim. Yesterday, today, forever. God is still the same.
what his power would do for you, your children. During a day service, I witnessed Ari McAllister say something that reverberated like a rifle shot throughout the camp. He said that when the church began on the day of Pentecost, they exclusively baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. People began to rush forward by the droves asking to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Another worshiper at Azusa Street, Glenn Cook, began to crisscross this nation, baptizing people in the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was one of those who accepted this grand and glorious truth of baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God was bringing so much back to his church. The message of the church was returning to the original message that Peter preached when the church began. When this church began, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that day over 3,000 received the Holy Ghost the most I ever saw in my day receive the Holy Ghost was 364 in a single service but in your lifetime it's happened dozens of times where in single services over 3,000 souls have received the gift of the Holy Ghost I was there at the beginning but you're here at the end the time that God is pouring out His Spirit like never before we've done one message the fire still falls
salvation. But Pentecost has everything to do with an experience with your God and Creator. This afternoon, in the very same city where it all began in North America, Los Angeles, it would be a shame to be celebrating a centennial 100 years from Azusa Street and not to experience that same power and presence that they experienced on 312 Azusa Street. This is more than a reminiscent celebration of something that happened 100 years ago. This is something that is real, alive, and powerful. It is a living reality in this house today. I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask them, have you ever received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues? Pregunta a tu vecino. ¿Has recibido el Espíritu Santo con la evidencia de hablar en otras lenguas? Pregunta, pregunta. Come on, ask somebody. Ask them, have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? Because it's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Here's what I want you to do. People are already coming forward. If you would turn up the house lights all over this house. I want those of you that want the Holy Ghost in this house to step out of your chair. If you're in the balcony, make your way forward. We got a lot of room up here. In the name of Jesus. Come on, they're coming. They're coming already. Come from the very back. I don't care where you are in this auditorium. Venga, venga. Ellos que quieren el Espíritu Santo, venga. Ellos que nos escuchan en internet. El Espíritu Santo ya está cayendo en su sala. Those of you that are listening by internet right now, the Spirit of the Lord is falling in the very room that you're watching this drama on right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, they're coming. Come on, I want you to come forward. Catalyst Ministries, I need you. Catalyst, I need you. Now listen. Come on, come on, I want you to come forward. They're coming from all sides. They're coming from all sides. I just want you to come and stand. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you know somebody that needs the Holy Ghost, I want you to grab them by the hand and bring them. Come on. They're coming. They're coming from all sides. Get somebody by the hand. You know somebody that needs the Holy Ghost. Bring them. I don't care what your experience has been thus far. I want you to come. God wants to give you more in this house. We're giving you time. We're giving you time to come out of the balcony. I want you to come. Ellos que están en el balcón. Vengan, vengan. We got time. Tenemos mucho tiempo en este lugar. Come close to the front. Come, come on, gather in. The people, there's people behind you that need to get up. Come on. Come on, come on. We got plenty of time to come. That's all right. Come on, those of you that are already, if you're praying with somebody that needs the Holy Ghost in this, come in this out front, of the aisle. bring them, them closer. Bring come, them closer. Come out of the aisle. Come on, altar come workers, on, come get on. up against the platform. Get out of the bring aisle. them, bring them closer. Bring them closer, please. They're still coming out of the aisle. Look, they're still coming. In the name of Jesus. We need you to come. Come on, come on. Come on, you're praying with some. Don't, don't get in the aisle and just stay there. Come on. There's a lot more room that we got to utilize up here in this front. Come, come on. Come as close to the front as you can. Gather come on. in closer. Come on. Come on. God is already done. People are already receiving the Holy Ghost in this house. Vengan, 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 acérquense, acérquense, lo más posible, come on, come on, vengan, 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 gloria al Señor, Dios ya está llenando con su Espíritu Santo en este lugar, come on, you got the Holy Ghost, mama, come on, come on, mama, come on, 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 vengan, vengan, están viniendo de todos lados, si sí, tenemos tiempo, ya tenemos espacio, Tenemos más espacio enfrente. Vengan, acérquense, acérquense. I want you to hear me all over this house. If you're praying with somebody that needs the Holy Ghost, I want you to stop. This isn't going to hinder anything. Musicians, just stop. Listen to me. Listen. 
all over this house, I want your attention. If you're praying with somebody, please stop. Please stop. She's already receiving the Holy Ghost right here. Listen. Look right here. If you're praying with somebody, I want you to stop now. Because she 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 stop. Just a second. Just a second. All over this house. If you're praying with somebody, just stop. This isn't going to hinder anything. It's not going to stop the move of God. They're still coming. Come on. Come on, those of you in the middle here, just make room so people can get down. They're coming in this aisle. Those of you in this aisle, come on, gather in, spread out, spread out as much as possible. Acercanse. We got plenty of time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, they're still, they're, they're still coming from all sides. Now, I want you to, I want you to listen. The first step to receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost is repentance repentance before God as you repent and ask God to forgive you and cleanse you from everything that is wrong in your life that may not be pleasing to him you are opening your heart to receive what God has al momento que usted empieza a arrepentirse usted está creando espacio está Preparando el corazón para recibir lo que Dios tiene para usted. We're going to repent. I don't care who you are, where you come from. All over this house, I'm calling for a mass repentance before God. Those in the balcony, I don't care. You've been in church 57 years. We're going to repent before God. All over this house. Those of you in this, in this front area, we're all going to repent together. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to begin to say, Jesus I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesus, for everything that's wrong in my life. I'm asking you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. Change my life, Jesus. Help me, God. I want to be right with you. In the name of Jesus, forgive me for all the sin in my life. I, I want to be right with you. Yo quiero ser recto contigo, Señor. Perdóname. Lávame, Señor. Lava mi mente, mi corazón. En el nombre de Jesucristo. Perdóname, Señor, de todo lo que está en mi vida. Amén. Que no te agrade, Señor. Forgive me. Wash, yes. What you're doing right now, you're creating room. The Holy Ghost is already being outpoured. God inhabits the praises of his people. He doesn't inhabit begging, he inhabits praise. When you begin to praise, al momento que usted empieza a alabar al Señor, usted va a empezar a hablar en otras lenguas. There's already people receiving the Holy Ghost Here all over go. this house. I want you to lift the thunderous praise. Levanta una alabanza al Señor en este lugar. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. They're already talking in tongues there. Receive it's the happening. Holy Ghost. This is Jesus. your day. Receive it. Receive it's the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it. In the Spirit of Santo. Just to you. Receive it all. In the name Yes. Come on, bring him up here. Al momento que reciben el Espíritu, recibimos al frente. In the name of Jesus, receiving the Holy Ghost. When they get the Holy Ghost, bring them to this platform. When they receive the Espíritu, traiganlos a la plataforma. Mira, 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 Dios está llenando en este lugar. Ya estamos en medio de Pentecostés. Receive the Holy Ghost. Be baptized. Come on, this is your day. Receive el Espíritu Santo. Receiving the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. 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 
Receive me the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Yes. You're talking in tongues now. Bring them up as they're receiving the Holy Ghost. Clang your most and lift them up and to get receive it. Receive, receive me the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. 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 As they're receiving it, bring them up. As they're receiving it, bring it up. Receive me the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Fuego, fuego, fuego apostolico. Receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Fuego, fuego. They're getting it out the middle of the street. They're receiving the Holy Ghost. They're receiving the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if there is pain in your body right now, God wants to heal in this house. I said, God wants to heal. I rebuke pain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command it to go the Holy Ghost. now in the name of Jesus. Yes, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive el Espíritu Santo. Están recibiendo el Espíritu Santo. Can some of y'all help us in the Catholic room? We got so many people. Can some of y'all help? Can some of y'all help over here? Some of the choir, please. Come help. Necesitamos personas que hablan español. Ahí atrás. Receive the Holy Ghost. 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 That young lady receiving the Holy Ghost. Bring her up. As they're receiving, bring them up. As they're receiving, bring them up. They're still coming in Jesus' name. As they're receiving, bring them up. As they're receiving, bring them up. As they're receiving, bring them up. As they're still coming in Jesus' name. As they're receiving, when they're receiving the Holy Ghost, bring them up. Come on, bring them up. Here's another one right here. Here's another one right here. There's another one right there. Bring them up. There's another one right there. Bring them up. Otra persona ya. Here's another one right here. Bring them up. Gloria. Here's another one right here. Otra hermanita hablando de otra. Here's another one right here. Gloria al nombre de Jesús. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Espíritu Santo en el nombre de Jesús. Look that couple getting the Holy Ghost right there. That couple getting the Holy Ghost right there. Gloria. Bring them up. Esa pareja está hablando de otra. Está recibiendo el Espíritu Santo. If you're praying with someone, si usted está orando con alguien, and they receive the Holy Ghost, y reciben el Espíritu Santo, I want you to bring them to the platform. Yo quiero que traigas a esta persona a la plataforma. We gotta connect them with the church. Tenemos que conectarlos a la iglesia. We still got people coming for the Holy Ghost. Ya están personas acercándose para recibir el Espíritu Santo. If you're not seeking the Holy Ghost or praying, you need to go step back. Si no estás orando o buscando el Espíritu Santo, but we need people receiving the Holy Ghost right here. All right, go ahead, musicians. Uh, if somebody receives it, bring them to the front. Here you go. Here's another one right here, mama. Más personas. Es el día tuyo. Recibelo en el nombre de Jesús. Gloria. Están recibiendo ahí atrás. Receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. She's about to speak with tongues. Lay hands right there. She's about to speak with tongues. Come on, Mama. He lay up, 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 up. Those of you that are watching by internet right now, the Spirit of God wants to fill the very room where you're.
you're sitting in right now, right there, you begin to lift up your hands and begin to worship and praise God. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost right where you are. Begin to tell Him that you love Him, that you praise Him. And I promise you, you'll begin to speak another language. We We're the Bring Holy Ghost up. in the Bring name of up. Jesus. Bring them up. In the name of Jesus. We've had, we've had over 100,000 people today watch this service. Let's give God high praise. There is people, if you're on the internet and you're receiving the Holy Ghost, email us, let us know. We're praying for you and your family. Más de 100,000 personas están, están mirando y escuchando este servicio por internet. Recibe el don del Espíritu Santo. If you have received the Holy Ghost, bring them to the platform. Bring them back here. Come on. 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 Bring him to the platform. Bring him to the platform. Bring him to the platform. Están recibiendo el Espíritu Santo como nunca. El poder y el fuego de Dios está cayendo todavía. Está descendiendo el poder del Espíritu Santo. Venga frente y reciba la experiencia del Espíritu Santo con la evidencia de hablar en otras lenguas. Si alguien ha recibido el Espíritu Santo, tráigalo a la plataforma. Queremos tomar los datos. Queremos llevar una cuenta. This gentleman's young boy just received the gift of the Holy Ghost. When they receive it, bring them to the back. Come on, she's getting the Holy Ghost right here. Bring her to the back. Come on.